Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome to you to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's topic is radio radio physics simplified and the topic is going to be focused on radiation detection and measurements. The topic is meant for the radiology residents, radiologist and also radiology technicians. It is also useful for entrance and exit exams. Now to start with our disc Claimers. Most of the material we are using in the series are our own. However, there are certain illustrations which we have downloaded from the net which are royalty free. We acknowledge with thanks from those from whom we have got it. Now let's uh, get back to the lecture that is the lecture on radiation detection and measurements. It is a simplified form. A larger form is available on the website or on our YouTube channel. Do visit it. Now let us come to a topic proper. The instrument used to detect radiation are referred to as the radiation detection devices. Now instruments used to measure radiation are called as the instruments used to measure radiation dose. Okay, radiation dose is called as radiation dosimeters. So there are two devices. One is detection and second is measurement. Both are important to know how much radiation is there because radiation is potentially a harmful. It should be used meticulously and unnecessary. There should not be exposure to radiation. Radiation safety measures, inverse square law, we have extensively covered somewhere else. Please visit it and know how a harmful like X-ray radiation we have converted to a very useful modality by knowing its limitation and by knowing its physics properly. Now what is a dosimetry? Dosimetry is a measurement. Now a device monitor and record ionizing radiation and its doses is called as dosimeter. Now we must distinguish background radiation from the radiation we are received. Otherwise what will happen is there will be a false results. Though we are measuring the radiation received by us, what will measure is the background radiation. So it will not be a true assessment of the radiation producing unit. So the this must distinguish a background radiation and the radiation receiving from the radiation producing unit. For that what we are using is first is personal dosimetry. Now personal dosimetry is it refers to monitoring of the individual who are exposed to radiation during the course of their work. We should know how much radiation an individual has received because one thing is harmful but more than that it can be used in a beneficial way provided we keep the dose in restriction. We measure it, we know it and we keep it in maximum permissible limit that is MPD. Maximum permissible dose is there. We have to operate below that. Now personal dosimetry policies needs to be placed for a occupational exposed industry. Wherever there is radiation, wherever there is exposure, wherever there is exposure to the working population, we must monitor them. We must keep them in reasonably low limits so that they will be in maximum permissible dose limit. Now the data from the dosimeters are collected and it is a cumulative so it has to be a reliable and it will be reliable only when it will be properly worn and we will measure the radiation which we have got from the radiation sources. We should return it in time to the lab. We should analyze how much radiation is there and we should make a cumulative assessment of the dose we have received because radiation effects are cumulative. We should know not only what radiation we have received today but also till now there has to be a record for it. Now radiation measurement is a time integrated dose that is the dose summed over a period of time usually it is around three months so every three months we have to return the measuring device to the laboratory and get a fresh one we know why it is i'll be discussing it shortly the dose is subsequently stated as an estimate of the effective dose equivalent to the whole body in msv for the reporting period or for the period the person was exposed in a radiation now dosimeter used for this purpose are the monitors and they can measure their measuring limit is up to 0.1 to 0.2 MSV. Now, what is the proper care we have to take? Unless we take proper care, the radiation we are receiving will not be measured properly. Unless we measure it properly, it will not be made a cumulative dose. It will not be tabulated and you will not know it how much radiation you have received till today. If you are a continuous radiation worker, you should know about it. Now, what is the care? The device we are using to measure the radiation should not be irradiated, irradiated in other time than when you are exposed to the radiation source. In other words, wear it only when you are on duty and ensure proper environmental conditions. Not only wearing is proper, it should be worn properly, it should be kept properly, it should be preserved properly, it should be sent back to the laboratory in time and a cumulative dose has to be adjusted. Then only it will be effective radiation dose management. The monitoring is accompanied through the 
use of personal dosimeter such as now there are different type of dosimeter which we are using one is called as pocket decimeter second was film badge and third is thermoluminescent dosimeter these are the three types available we'll know them each other and we'll know which is the best one and we'll of course follow it on our future practice now what are the film badges the film badge use a small x-ray film sandwiched between several filters to help the radiation detection when we were earlier radiation students in between 80s 81 to 85 we were using this film badges now the photographic effect refers to the ability of radiation to blacken the photographic film now these photographic films were sandwiched in between multiple filters as you are seeing here there are different metallic filters which were used to differentiate between a type of radiation now how you should wear the badge wearing a badge on the collar region because the collar region include head neck lens of the eye are important a thyroid is supposed to be protected when you are dealing with a long exposure like fluoroscopy a thyroid guard is essential now what is the wearing period each member of the staff wear film badge for a period of four weeks now here we are said four weeks ideally it should be four weeks but by and large it was going to be of three months in most of the institute but ideally it should be four weeks if it is film batch let's warn you again if it is film batch which is not used nowadays what we are using nowadays we are coming to it shortly at least an end of period the film inside is changed the exposed film is sent to the BRC lab now what is the disadvantage they are not sensitive enough to capture low radiation or low level energies they were not catching because you need at least a radiation which fog the film at that distance so sensitivity of it was a bit a problem it was not sensitive to low radiation then there is susceptibility for fogging was reduced or you can use or you can store the film film badges in a place which is not humid which is not having very high temperature which is not having a bright light because that will cause a fogging to the film and they should not be used for more than four weeks at a stage then what was another disadvantage other than these like working conditions are not even in your hand then storage space is not in your hand so whatever was available you have to make use that's why this was called as a disadvantage and we went to some other radiation monitoring now it is enormous task to chemically process a large number of films it's the headache of a laboratory and subsequently compare each of them to the test film what is important here this thing cannot be standardized properly or this thing cannot be a properly sensitive so we went to some other device that is called as tld uh, in routine term that is thermoluminescent dosimetry now what is it the limitation of film batch are overcome by the tld batches as i told you whenever you are finding disadvantages you go towards a new technology which gives you a better solution now thermoluminescence is the property of certain material to emit when they are stimulated by heat now material such as lithium fluoride the lithium borate, calcium fluoride and calcium sulfate has got this property that is when they are heated they can emit light or when they are exposed to radiation they can store it in them so when lithium fluoride crystal is exposed to radiation a few electrons become trapped in the higher energy shell these electron when they return to their normal energy level the lithium fluoride requires heating so when you heat they will liberate this energy out as the electron return to their stable state light is emitted because of the energy which is difference of two orbital levels now the amount of light emitted is measured and is it is proportional to the radiation dose so we know how much radiation dose patient has received the doctor has received how much dose the radiation worker has received all these things can be calculated now see how they are now whatever is the black pocketed material is sent to the laboratory 
it comes with the name of a technician and it is written to the laboratory where their indexing is done where that calculation is done to know how much radiation a person has received now storage of uh, tld batches i told you unless we keep it properly unless we care proper take proper care of them they will not give us a sensitivity good enough to get very small amount of radiations now batches must be left in an area where it could receive a radiation exposure when not born by the individual so a batch should not receive a radiation when it is not worn by a particular person the storage is in a dark area and it doesn't have a radiation background then lost or damages should be reported immediately to the radiation safety officer and the replacement batch should be issued this is done by a rso that is radiation safety officer who sends it to the laboratory and gets a fresh one then dose limits of aerb the limit of effective dose applied to some of the effective doses from the external as well as internal sources the limit include the exposure due to national background radiation and national background exposures the calendar area shall be used for all the prescribed dose limits then uh, we are talking of the occupational exposures an effective dose of 20 msv average over five consecutive year if it is less than that be happy an effective dose of 30 msv in a single calendar year is again a warning that you are exceeding a radiation dose then equivalent dose of lens of the eye is 150 msv per year that should be born otherwise they will be susceptible for premature cataract and equivalent dose of extremities will be giving you very shortly it is higher but should be born in mind and equivalent dose of skin is around 500 msv see it was average 20 lens was 150 and maximum equivalent dose to the skin is so skin has got maximum tolerance to the radiation or it is less sensitive to radiation then what is rule for apprentice and trainees the occupational exposures of apprentice and trainees between the year age of 16 year to 18 years of average shall be so controlled that the following limits are not exceeded a rso has to take care of it a radiologist has to take care of all these things so that those apprentices who are coming new to the department are protected an effective dose of 6 msv per year is fixed for them then an effective dose of lens should not be exceeding 50 msv then effective dose to the extremities should be within 150 per year the unit is msv then effective dose to the skin is 150 msv per year now what is the rule for the mobile population moving population or the population outside the radiation unit there may be offices there may be some business centers the effective dose of 1 msv should be allowed to them not more than that the effective dose to the lens of the eye we are talking of the members of public not radiation workers is 15 a year it's a cumulative so it will get spread over the long duration then the effective dose to the skin 50 so it's less to the people who are outside the radiology department those who are not regularly exposed so let's come to a conclusion protect patient protect people protect staff remember dose of cumulative if you receive a dose of radiation today which is excess it is going to remain throughout so you have to take care of it but the advantage is it will get spread over the multiple years you have to weigh what are the benefit you have to weigh what is the risk of that and this ratio of benefit versus uh, risk should be calculated principle of radiation protection are extensively covered which follows inverse square law which uh, gives you a hints how a radiation should be avoided or minimized then uh, those reduction should be used like uh, reduction in time you use short time so that the radiation will be on for a shorter time then distance that is inverse square law try to keep away as much as possible yourself then shield whichever are the sensitive areas like thyroid shields are available then gonadal shields are available lead apron you are wearing then also there are lead goggles which protects you from your eye 
from the radiation. Now what is recommended? Shield thyroid and gonads. Always wear lead apron. Repeatedly we are saying because the important thing and it should be kept in mind. Measure the, the radiation you have received. See the cumulative dose till now and then take the preventive measures. CT scan, often there are a lot of exposures. There are thin sections. So it should be justified. Whenever essential, you must do it. But whenever not necessary, just for the purpose of uh, experimentation or for the purpose of the follow-up, they should not be done unless they are indicated. Patient education is important. There should be a universal X-ray bank where patients X-ray can be accessible whenever from a hospital. Now this concept is coming. It is like an ATM that you can access it from anywhere. You get your data digitalized, but still long way for it. It will take some time, but definitely it's a future. Now with that, we are coming to end of our lecture. I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Know physics, know the harmfulness, know the usefulness, get the ratio of harm versus the uh, benefit versus the risk and give best to your patient. That is whole aim of our these lectures. With that, thank you. Goodbye. Take care and visit our website, YouTube channel. And if you like the lecture, give us a like.